right, we're going to get this thing fired up, ready to go here. We're going to continue on with the Ultimate General Civil War Union campaign, live stream series. Going to give a few minutes for folks to get, get in and get going while I get everything set up. While we're waiting to get started here today, we're going to start with Brock Road. Hopefully, we'll also get to Mule Shoe, but I'm not entirely sure of that yet. I'm just going to kind of depend on how long it takes. But that's at least the plan right now. Hey, hey, Abraham, what's going on? Going to start with Brock Road, which is part of the wilderness, and then hopefully we'll get to Spotsylvania as well with Mule Shoe. I don't imagine we'll get any further than that. Probably won't quite get to Cold Harbor. I think Cold Harbor is the next battle, isn't it, after those two? It would seem to make sense. Let's take a look here. Yeah, Cold Harbor. So, Brock Road and Mule Shoe most likely will be about as far as we get. I'm going to give a few minutes for folks to get in, and then we'll get started. Let's see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take my first core and my third core because those are the two that I have set up and ready to go. And it's uh, not a big advantage. He's got more guns than me, and I've only got him by about twelve thousand men on this one. Hey Brian, what's going on? All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give it about three more minutes. I usually wait until about five after. And then we're going to dive into this thing. My plan is not to go straight at him, but um, to send part of my force straight at him and then actually send a division or two as a flanking attack to kind of come into these woods and and, and hit him over here so he can't put the full amount of his force right here to face that side so I'm gonna kind of faint over here but hopefully the main push will come on this side we'll see how it works out if, if I'm able to do that or not About, about two more minutes, we'll get started. Mm -hmm. 
So for those of you, if anybody is coming in and you're new to this live stream series I've been doing, you may wonder why uh, you see me responding to chat messages that you don't see. Uh, I am streaming simultaneously to both Twitch and YouTube. So if you're on one or the other, you're only going to see the, uh, the comments from the people on your platform. I can see both in one place. I have a, um, a website that combines those for me so I can see all of them in one live uh, chat. But you may not see all of those depending on if you're on your tu YouTube or Twitch. If you're on Twitch, if you would please uh, hit the button to follow me, I would greatly appreciate that. I'm trying to get up to 50 followers on Twitch. Um, that opens up some new options for me. I'm still kind of learning how all that works. YouTube, of course, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Trap the Texas division that will arrive on my left. I will plan to do that, Brian. Let's go ahead and dive into this thing. All right, General, it seems we outnumber the rebels and their brigades are scattered in the woods trying to exploit the good cover behind Brock Road. March down Orange Plank Road and attack the rebels. Well, kind of. Um, so that's the plan here is, uh, I believe, if I remember right, there's a one of the other objectives that opens up that you have to hold at the end of the battles over here. So I've got to at least keep some of my force on that side. Uh, but what I want to do here, and I want to lead with a couple of single star units, but then I want to send a couple of my really good ones over here, Paper Collar and O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws, over that way. I'm going to keep my artillery on this side, just because it's a long way to move artillery on a flanking maneuver all the way around. And I'll kind of shift this way a little bit, but still keep some units down there. Okay, so let me pause so I can start issuing orders here. It's pretty dark because it's only 4.30 in the morning. Uh, we're going to go right up the road here. Let me take a look. Where's the objective? Okay, so so this is going to be reminiscent of what Stonewall J Jackson did at Chancellorsville. Uh, we're going to try to go all the way up and over and surprise him coming out of the woods. Now, he may have skirmishers up there. I don't know, but we'll find out soon enough. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm going to move forward ever so slightly. Now, he's, like I said, he's probably going to have skirmishers. I imagine I'll run into them somewhere. As I march forward, I'm going to move up, move up pretty slowly. Get my guns into position. And then wait for the, the attack to come around. I don't know how long I have in this first phase. But obviously neither side has most of their troops yet. But I'm not going to come any further than the edge of these woods for now. All right, we're going to hang tight right there. While the flanking force goes around, because once I get out here into this open, I'm sure that's where his artillery is going to be. So far, so good. There's nobody up here. I'm sure they're around somewhere. I want a nice, wide, long line that I'm going to march forward. No reserves. I'm just going to push them forward. Once I get them into these woods, I'll probably start marching out on this side. Oh, hey, there's our artillery. So he's got a unit out here. Wasn't really expecting that. Let's get him turned before we get flanked. Let me slow down here. 
Okay. So let's do this. Boy, his, uh, didn't expect his fortifications to reach that far. So I'm going to send these guys up to help out. What do I have here? I've got 20 pounders and 24 pounders. I'm gonna move them over too. What's happening here? All right, he's got some cavalry up here, some mounted infantry, I guess it is. All right, wow, that was fast. I didn't expect to drive him out that easily. He definitely has artillery up here, though. Oh boy, these are some big brigades, but they're not real experienced. some skirmishers all right let's hang tight right here I'm going to hold off on these guys right now until I get my guns in position. move in because I'm taking artillery fire and I don't want that to last I want to get to the edge of these woods. I want to get to his artillery and then start hitting his fortifications from the side. Surprise, surprise, another fortification. Not a problem. I just know I need to take these objectives because I think it opens up. And then, of course, the reinforcements arrive. So I want to try and overrun these positions. Let's get these Napoleons moved up. That's a really strange fortification position here. Let's hit this battery. Guys, look at the numbers so far. So I've lost 700 men. He's already lost about 14, 1,500. Let's overrun these guys.
All right, change of plans. All right. General, your task to repulse AP Hill's Corps from Brock Road has become more complicated. The Texas Brigade, the vanguard of Longstreet's Corps, has been spotted. It is more than certain that Longstreet is advancing to attack us. All right. So let's pause for just a second. Now here is what we need to do to win. We need to hold Taps Woods, hold Brock Road Woods, hold Hintman Fields, lose less than 40% of your army. All right, so that's back here. Uh, well, I'm getting reinforcements, so I'll leave a, a brigade or two back there to hold that position when the reinforcements arrive. We've got to hold this objective and this one. Okay. Seems easy enough. I'm going to park some Napoleons down here. We'll put a brigade on the flank. We'll drive these guys off. And let's push into these woods before Longstreet arrives in force. He actually outnumbers me at the moment. Well, that just changed because I got my reinforcements. All right, let's pause again. Here comes the second core. I'm going to start sending these guys down this way. Ward's flank. Where are you talking? Okay, over here. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's send Paper Color Brigade down there. The rest of these guys will send right to the center for now. And then as they get closer, I'll figure out where best to use them. Woo! Brutal. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull, pull Ward back a little bit. While we send the Paper Color Brigade down here. Make sure everybody's moving here. Looks like they are. Okay. All right, I've got them by about 19,000 men right now. Avenir's Revenge is kind of taking it on the chin right now. battery's about to be toast. Alright, where's the, the... Okay, there's the other re reinforcements coming in. Brigadier General John Buford's been wounded. Let's pause for just a second here. These guys are still making their way down. It's taking them a while. We've got two and a half hours to go here. I want to get these skirmishers down here a little further. We'll break off some from Paper Collar Brigade as well, just to keep an eye out over here.
I gotta get rid of these skirmishers. Hey, Joker, what's going on? Hey, just to let you guys know, uh, I just played my first video for um, Scourge of War Gettysburg. I know a lot of people have been asking me to play that, or any of the Scourge of War games. So I recorded a video just uh, kind of getting my feet wet with it a little bit. Played as the Iron Brigade, um, so that actually just uploaded. So as soon as I'm done with this live stream, I'll go ahead and make that video live as well. Joker, it sounds familiar, but I, I can't remember the premise or the details of it. All right, here comes a, a full new division for him. I gotta get these reinforcements down here. I'll leave my leave one unit of cavalry back there for now. Let's start moving some of these guns up. He's bunching up right here. Alright, no worries there. I was prepared for that. I need to push into these woods. I don't like him having the woods and me being out in the open. Alright, here's why I have these Napoleons here, because when he attacks, now I get some, uh, get some nice shots on him. General McClellan, don't you have a presidential campaign to be looking to, sir? Wow, Paper Collar Brigade has taken it on the chin in this one. Oh, maybe not as much as I thought. They had skirmishers. All right, let's see if we can sneak in behind him a little bit here. I'll send these skirmishers down here. Every battle for the rest of this campaign is bloody and uh, basically is a major battle. Joker, I've never gone fascist as Soviet, so I couldn't really tell you, I don't know. So we're gonna come down here. It looks like nobody's there, so if I can start wrapping my flanks around him, that should help. All right, we need some supplies over here. Well, one thing I have a lot of are major generals, so it's not a big deal that I lose some. I've got so many major generals that I've got a huge pool of them in my reserve. Plus, I've got a bunch of brigades that are commanded by Major Generals. Uh, 
Oh, yes. Joker, I have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see the whole thing, but I've seen parts of it. Very interesting. I think I must have seen it on Netflix or Amazon Prime or something. push forward over here where I've got a nice numerical advantage and then bring it around on his flank start folding folding this up I might actually be able to envelop him and cause some pretty massive casualties make sure I've got somebody sitting back I do on the objective Oh, that's the worst. When you go in thinking there's one battery and there's two. Yeah, they're trying to hold this objective at all costs. Which is what I want them to do because I'm trying to wrap around. I'm taking a lot of casualties early so that I can hopefully envelop him and destroy his army late. I do have to be careful because I can't win this battle if I take more than 40% casualties and I'm at 27 right now with an hour to go. Texas Division. I'm not sure if Wolford was commanding. I don't know who was commanding the Texas Division at that point. The Texas Brigade. Let me see. I'm looking it up here. At the Wilderness, they were under John Gregg in Fields' division. 
There he is right there. That's the Texas Brigade, the one with 1,981 men that just fell back. All right, this is where we start hopefully causing a lot of casualties. Which as the as the campaign enters its final stages it becomes easier and easier for me to replace and harder and harder for him to replace. It's kind of the advantage as the union and Grant understood that. Which is why these battles were so bloody for him. I feel like I'm going to run out of time. I'm wondering if it'll let this battle continue. Because I've got a chance to destroy his army here. <laughs> Robert, it's actually nice to finally be free of that Confederate legendary campaign after all this time. I'm going to break off some skirmishers here and go grab these supplies if I can. Twenty minutes left. I guess I should go in and take the objective. He's bunching up on it best he can, though. There's the supplies. Appreciate that, Robert. It, uh, it was not easy, and it took, as you saw, it took a lot of replaying and going back and correcting mistakes. Something, obviously, that was not, not a luxury that real generals had. My goodness, this has been a bloody mess. Yeah, the city is tough. That's why I had to go back and replay it and shift more of my units to the southern areas. Because I held the forts just fine but couldn't hold the city. So I had to had to replay it and build my army differently so I had more of a southern presence. I still haven't taken the objective. There we go. Now it's contested. I hope that's not an issue. I've got him bunched up in here so well that I, I hate to see this thing end.
Let it continue, please. Let it continue. Yes. Because I've got him boxed in. This is going to be really bloody for me, but I can I can handle it. He can't. Yeah, I like the rifled guns, and I like to take his out first. I try to target his artillery as much as possible. Alright, we've got him boxed in. Just lost a major general. All right, he's down to 29,000 men. I'm gonna try to bring some more strength down to this side. I'm bringing up my guns. Interesting little situation we've got here. See how quickly I drive that number down. I've got him by 20,000 men now. Yeah, Robert, thank you. That was actually... <laughs> it's, it's funny because we actually shot that video last summer. It was a year ago in August. We were in Washington to see Wicked on Broadway. My daughter's really into musical theater. Hey, we just got one to surrender. And she didn't know the first thing about Hamilton besides the fact he was on the $10 bill. And now she just can sing every word of every song in that musical. She knows a lot about him. I'm listening to a book on audio from Audible about Alexander Hamilton now. It's really fascinating. So I've actually learned a whole lot more about him since we were there. But yeah, my daughter's, uh, of my three kids, she's the one who is the most like me. All right. Well, we're wiping this guy out now. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna break through. Darn it. Alright. We're gonna let this go now. Alright, let's finish that up right there. Alright, so <laughs> thirty thousand for him. About thirty five when you count guns, cavalry, and missing. Um almost twenty thousand losses for me, but I was assaulting, so I mean I guess I'll take that. But main deal here is that he can't replace those losses as well as I can. And I'll just keep throwing it at him like that the best I can. All right, so we replenished most of those losses. And when you figure that I've got medicine maxed out in my career points, uh, that means I get 20% of my losses back. I basically, that was a wash. It was basically break even on that one. Um, I'm going to keep going logistics to keep my stuff up for uh, the amount of uh, uh, supplies that I have. All right, we got to spend some points because we're going we're gonna to max out here in a minute. I think, because I've got so many guns, I'm going to go ahead and buy 8,000 more men. All right, so... Lots of generals to replace. Good news is I've got a lot of generals to replace them. So let's first check all our division commanders. We've got a bunch of leveling up to do, too. Uh, I believe that we take two full core into the mule shoe, which is a nightmare of a battle. Yep. So here's the deal. We're going to have an assault core. And I'm going to primarily make that up of new troops. So 2nd Corps under General Grant is going to be our assault corps. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start dropping in all of the 
minimally experienced units that I can for that assault. And I'll probably even create some more. Alright, we gotta drop some guys out of this. And we're gonna go with artillery, uh, rifled artillery. We'll take a bunch of 10 pounders, not Napoleons. Where's my 20 pounders? So we'll take 20 pounders as much as I can. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to actually probably go ahead and create a couple of new units too. Springfield 1842s. That's my equivalent of farmer rifles. We're going to call these our assault brigades because they're going to be the ones that kind of spearhead the attack. With these Springfield 1842s. Paul Meadows will do the trick too because they're they're good in melee combat. Robert, yeah. Um, honestly, I was one of the last to subscribe to the twelve guns a unit theory. Um, I always felt I, I argued until I was blue in the face that you were so limited in a lot of these battles and how many units that you could take that I hated the idea of taking only half as many. Um, artillery pieces as I otherwise could into these battles. Um, but you know what? In the bigger battles where you have plenty of manpower and plenty of uh, things that you can take in, I like it. I like um, they definitely move faster and are more agile, more uh, more flexible for you um, with only 12. Uh, I, I still think 24 probably cause more damage. But all in all, um, I like it. I, I do prefer the 12s when I have the freedom to do that. Um, I've never seen conclusive proof that has um, convinced me one way or the other on that. We're getting a bunch of brand new units here for this. Basically, they're all going to be assault in this first wave. So I'm not even going to worry about naming all of them assault units. Yes, sir. These guys have Lawrence's. Those are Enfields. I don't want that for... We'll go with these ones. These are pretty good with melee. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. These are 1855s. Don't really want those. Not for this. I got so many weapons available, it's not not even funny. That's why I went for the extra manpower, because I had so many weapons that I wasn't too worried about money. Alright, let's double check the, uh, the numbers in all my guns, make sure they've got what they need. Yes, sir. My artillery units. All right, so that's all the, the second core, which is going to be my first one. Then I'm going to follow it up 
and I have another full core that I can take in. So let's just start throwing folks in for that. Oh, we got to get another division commander here. Okay. Yeah, this will definitely be the only other battle we do today. I'm not going to worry about maxing them out too much. I got a brigadier general in charge of a battery here. That's Probably overkill. Okay, um, we still got 2,800 men here. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. Second core will be the assault, and then the first core will be the, the ones that bring up the reserve. All right, so we're going to have 84,000 men up against his 57,000. That feels good, but it's the mule shield. Grabbing a drink of my Snapple apple here before I dive into this. So, historically, let's talk about this for just a second. I'm trying to remember who the general was, uh, but he basically advocated for punching through right here. And that's actually what I've ended up doing most of the time, is just sending kind of a, just a, a real thin, uh, two brigade wide assault force right through here to punch and then kind of break out. Joker is back. Um, so we'll give that a try. I'll start moving them all into position over here. Eh, the easiest way to do this, I think, will be to go by divisions just to line them up. Uh, we're going to cut off, look awfully close to his position doing that. So let's go right there. I'm just going to start shifting everybody over there, and then I'll worry about lining them up where I want them. We've got four hours to take the mule shoe. You know, honestly, as I'm thinking about it, it's closer to this side. This is all wide open. Why would I go that way? Seems to make a lot more sense to go this way, no? Joker, uh, next stream, Hearts of Iron 4, will be Tuesday. Tuesday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. At least that's the plan right now. If things come up for my work, I may have to change that, but we'll see. All right, let's speed this along. So right now, the numbers are basically even. I've got 400 more men than he does. I could, Brian, but I feel like this is a tough nut to crack. If he's got 40,000 men, then he's got plenty all the way along this line. These fortifications late in the war, I, I've tended to find that kind of punching a hole in one spot works pretty well for me. I don't think there are any roads on this side. 
This is going to get a little close here to his lines. Uh, Joker, I, I don't know if you've been there for the previous ones I've been playing, but I'm playing the USA States mod. Uh, the last, I think, two or three episodes, that's what it's been. Just trying to get everybody down to this area for now here. These are all green recruits with my least favorable weapons. Uh, goal, goal. This is on uh, Brigadier General difficulty. Uh, only not because I find it to be challenging because it's really not especially on the Union side but um, because since I'm doing a live stream a lot of folks recommend it might be the way to go because I'm spending about as much time following the chat and responding to that as I am paying attention to the game uh, and I just can't give the focus that I need to to the game while live streaming uh, on a higher difficulty so this is Major General I mean not Major General uh, Brigadier General uh, I just finished up my legendary campaign on the Confederate uh, campaign. Finally took Washington after 58 episodes. Uh, and I will at some point do a legendary campaign on the Union side. Uh, I'm just going to take a little break to do some other things first. Here come the reinforcements. Holy cow. That's a lot of people. So I'm actually going to go ahead and start lining them up right here. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll get to Führerreich at some point. Alright, now we've got him almost 2 to 1 outnumbered. I'm going to have to push through here before too long just because he'll get reinforcements too at some point. So I'm going to punch through right here. I mean, it makes more sense to go down a little further south, but it's going to take a long time to do that. Obviously, the the lead regiments are going or lead brigades are going to take pretty heavy casualties. through as quickly as we can. This was some of the most prolonged and bloody fighting of the entire war. Of course, Spotsylvania is the, the famous place where one of the most famous quotes of the war happened. Um, and also one of the most beloved generals and one of the highest ranking generals to die in the Civil War, John Sedgwick, and he just got his reinforcements. John Sedgwick was killed. Uh, he was a Union Corps commander, was affectionately known as Uncle John by his troops, and he was shot by a sniper right after being warned about Confederate snipers, and... He, was, he had just finished saying or was in the middle of saying they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance when he was shot and killed. Uh, goal, goal. The, uh, I'm actually simultaneously streaming uh, to both Twitch and YouTube. In fact, most of the comments that you'll hear me responding to are coming from, from YouTube. Uh, I see all the chats from both in one place, but this video, as soon as I'm done live streaming, it'll um, 
it'll be live on my YouTube channel probably in about an hour or so afterward. So just look for the history guy, you'll find it on there. Along with all the previous episodes of this campaign on the live stream series. They're all in one playlist. I want to move some of these guns up a little further. Hey, there's a Stonewall Brigade. Oh, we broke through the first line. That's the easy part. skirmishers too oh good we drove him out so let's look at the numbers here I'm sure it's not pretty All right, so well, I've only lost 3,000 men so far I'm gonna start moving up some of the guns Well, of course the rebels have sent reinforcements. You don't want it to be too easy, do you? Lose less than 40% of your army. <laughs> That's going to be the fun part. I guess I'm okay. Uh, second Corps lost about 8.5%. First Corps only lost 2%. I guess i got to turn off the run command on some of these units. They still have it. Oh boy. Just gotta push them out of the fortifications and then I'm home free. So any of you who may be new to this, uh, I do the Ultimate General Civil War live stream every Sunday afternoon, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time uh, in the U.S., so it would be New York time. I do a uh, Hearts of Iron 4 live stream every Tuesday and Friday at around 1 p.m. New York time in the afternoon. 
And as I mentioned earlier, I've got a Scourge of War Gettysburg video that I just uploaded. It'll go live shortly after this live stream is complete. All right, hardest part's over. Now we just got to push through to the objective. Second bull run as uh, Garrett as Union or Confederate. Because as the Union, second bull runs the easiest battle in the entire campaign. And I can tell you how to do that fairly easily if you'd like. Union? Yeah. Um, if you go to my channel and just search for second bull run Union, you'll, you'll see the, the video. But the main thing is you can win that battle in the very first phase with like three or four thousand casualties tops. You just have to, to get around his flank really fast. Yeah, you don't need 80 brigades. You 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 can win that battle with about 15. Um, it's really, really easy. You just need to get around his rear and take... There's only one objective you have to take as the Union on that battle. And you can take it right away before his reinforcements even arrive. So just go to my channel, search for Second Bull Run Union on my videos. And, and you'll you'll see that, uh, how to do that pretty pretty easily. So just, yeah, go go to YouTube and, and, and search for it that way. That'd be the easiest way to do it. I can't type in the chat or I'd just give you a link, but if somebody else is able to do that, that'd be great. I also have a Discord uh, that's been set up for followers of the channel. So you guys, uh, if you want to look at the channel description below, you can see where that is. Let's get, oh, no, 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 that's not what I want to do. Actually, there's no reason to really advance over there. I'm gonna move these guns up some more. All right, so I've lost uh, 11,000 men. He's lost five. That's pretty much to be expected on this battle. Just doing what Grant did in real life, which is brute force, overwhelming numbers and materials, using the strengths of the Union. Doesn't have to be finesse. He's going to bunch up everything right here at the objective. Yeah, I'm going to end up losing 30,000 men in this battle at this rate. Now maybe it'll slow down here once uh, I've pushed him out of the objectives. It's going to at least be 20,000 for sure. But this is what the, the Civil War in 1864 was. It was assaults on heavily fortified positions. It was ugly and it was awful. Alright, 
I was just about to drop Marshall back, but he's doing it for me. here. Brian's talking about the hill just north of the objective being a pain. You're absolutely right. Hold up. These guys, there's no reason for me to even worry about this right now. I'm going to back these guys up. The focus right now is driving these guys off. Good night. He's only lost 9,000 men to my 18. Part of that is the fortifications. Part of it is the fact that I sent a bunch of zero and one star poorly equipped units to assault, which was great for the initial punch through, but I should have probably had more well-equipped experienced units right behind them to follow it up, and I don't have that. So now that I'm just getting into a, a shoot it out situation, it's not going so well. Thirty four minutes left. There we go. Now we're getting some of these guys to retreat, so now I need to push down. Still got a bunch of guys parked back here. All right, we're gold. Just gotta finish pushing it through.
13 minutes isn't a lot of time, and he's still got a lot of people here. Maybe I shouldn't speak so soon. I hate this battle. Hate it, hate it, hate it. I don't know. I think he thinks that this thing's over if I don't get it in the next two minutes because he just rushed his mounted infantry into that objective. Okay, we can keep going. Good. I think you're right. I think... Typically, it, it depends on the time of day, whether it allows it to continue or not. But I want this thing to end as quickly as humanly possible. Again, my medicine's maxed out, so at least I get 20% of these guys back. Which is only about 4,000 men, but it, it'll be enough. There he goes again, rushing them in there. All right, there we go. What a mess. So he lost 14,000, I lost 22. Honestly, all things considered, just like last battle, I'll take it. Now that probably could have gone a lot more smoothly than that, but I should be in good position for the debacle that is Cold Harbor to come. Yes, sir. Let's just take a, take a look at the situation. Yeah, John Payne, I, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I rushed it because of that stupid timer. And I should have been a whole lot more patient, and it probably would have gone a lot better for me. But let's take a look at the situation. Here's Cold Harbor. It's coming. And his, his army is showing fifty to 55,000 remaining, but I know that he'll probably have at least that many at Cold Harbor. Of course, Cold, Har Cold Harbor is tricky because it doesn't necessarily show all of his forces at the beginning. But that'll be for next week, next Sunday. We will fight the Battle of Cold Harbor, and we'll see if we can go beyond that. In the meantime, be watching. Um, Scourge of War Gettysburg will be live shortly. Uh, come back for the Hearts of Iron 4 live stream if you're available at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. Um, if you're on Twitch, please... Follow me on Twitch. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. I'd appreciate that. This video will be like all of them live shortly on YouTube. As always, guys, thank you so much. I love these live streams. I love being able to talk and interact in real time with everyone. Check out the Discord. Check out the Patreon page. And I'm out. We'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for watching.